morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Bear Creek Arsenal bufferless 9mm PCC. But before we get into the video, if you want to help me out personally, you can, of course, like, share, and subscribe, as that is all free and does help me out quite a bit. Also, go ahead and comment your love-hate relationship with 9mm PCCs in the comments down below. Now, full disclosure on the bufferless 9mm upper from Bear Creek Arsenal is that I have worked with Berkeley Arsenal in the past. They no longer work with me as of this point in time. However, I did not pay for this. This was actually sent in to me for review by a kind viewer of the channel. So while they did not send this out to me, I didn't pay for it either. And that's about that. Now getting into what exactly is the bufferless nine millimeter AR from Bear Creek Arsenal. Well, it is just that, meaning that it does not utilize your standard traditional AR-15 buffer tube like your normal AR-9s will meaning that you can have folding adapters or weird stocks or what have you, making it a much more versatile platform. Again, keeping in mind that it is a nine millimeter PCC. Now, the way that they've gone about that is you have an internal recoil system, obviously no buffer tube, anything else like that. And you have a rear cap that does come with the upper receiver. So this huge chunk of aluminum houses part of the recoil system. And again, has a 1913 rail on the back. For attaching your stock adapters or what have you. This is a Midwest Industries 1913 to AR-15 buffer tube that is also, of course, a folding stock. So it will fold to the side, making this four and a half inch nine millimeter a very compact package and something that you could very easily put inside a bag. Now, before we get going into too many specifics about it, I should at least show you how it works a little bit. It is fairly obnoxious to get apart, but here is the entire recoil assembly. So again, this is a steel guide rod and a very anemic spring. This is the only thing slowing down that bolt as it's going, because again, this is just a blowback nine millimeter system. Fits right into the rear aluminum cap. And then of course the bolt slides back and forth on it. There is a tiny rubber buffer piece in the bottom area here that will, you know, kind of soften it up at the rearmost point on the bolt. But as far as the recoil system goes, that is incredibly simple. Now, if I show you a little bit of the BCG itself. This one here does, of course, have the right side charging handle, their Gen 2 side charger, which is actually pretty good. It was pretty tight on there. But I'll go ahead and take that off and then show you guys the bolt a little bit. It is basically a chopped up nine millimeter bolt that is about, you know, two inches shorter than a full length nine millimeter BCG. It is a very large chunk of steel, as you can tell. Now the main bolt itself is fairly standard nine millimeter that is just chopped again a couple inches shorter it does also have some machining on the side for the right side charging handle and then on top you have a very huge chunk of steel that one allows the recoil system the guide rod and spring to fit inside so as it's cycling back and forth it keeps everything aligned on top of that because you're cutting off a lot of weight from the back of a nine millimeter bcg you probably need to add that weight back in. So of course you have this huge chunk on top that does add weight. Those two holes on top are for the YFS screws that bolt this upper piece to the actual carrier itself. You of course have an extractor here on the side, very simple. Other than that, it's a fairly standard nine millimeter BCG. And then on the lower, we have our fixed ejector. This lower, it should be stated, this one here is the Aero EP9. And that's what I did all of my testing with. And at this point we have a little bit over a thousand rounds in total on the system. Now reinstallation is fortunately fairly simple. So you just slide your bolt in place. Now you need to line up the guide rod and spring so that it fits into the BCG itself. They're fit right in. And then you kind of need to rotate them into position, which the first couple times you do it will be a little awkward. However, I've done this plenty of times at this point and it is perfectly fine. Last thing you do is then go ahead and reinstall your side charger and then the system is back together. Now, because this is on an Aero EP9 lower receiver, it doesn't have a last round bolt hold open, but you can, of course, manually hold back the bolt if you so desire. And of course, we know you got it back to together correctly because the bolt has full travel. Now, talking for a minute about the end cap that is again included, it is just a chunk of billet aluminum. It does have one sling cup in the bottom here. So if you're using like a one point sling or something like that, you could still make it work. Now, again, this is just a big chunk, chunk of aluminum that is included. So I believe the total for this upper receiver, the side charging one is $350 shipped, which is pretty good considering that it comes with everything that you need, the recoil system, the cap, all of that sort of stuff. 
the only other thing you, you need to supply there is the lower receiver. Now, the way that this installs is very simple. You have a metal cap that screws into the lower receiver that holds basically just that little tiny rubber buffer and where the bolt will slide into. Then this big aluminum cap with the rear Picatinny section slides over top and there is a singular bolt that holds that in place. Overall, very simple, but fortunately it has worked perfectly fine. I torqued everything down snugly and it hasn't moved whatsoever in about a thousand rounds. So while it is fairly simplistic, not super pretty, it is a big chunk of aluminum at the end, it does work. Now getting through the rest of the components, this is the four and a half inch version, which for me is perfectly fine. Some people might like to see a six, seven, eight inch length, so on and so forth, and they do offer different lengths. However, if you're looking for as short of a package as possible, it's still nine millimeter, nine millimeter ball is still gonna do nine millimeter ball things. It's basically just going to punch a hole, irregardless of whether it's from a four and a half inch barrel, six and a half inch barrel, so on and so forth. The only real difference there is if you're gonna be using some sort of specific defensive load, but for most people, they're probably gonna be filling it up with 115 grain or 124 grain ball, and that's about it. Now, four and a half inch barrel, the flash hider that is included is just that, it's a spiral flash hider. The thread pattern is one half by 36, so your standard one half by 28s will not fit, and that's done, of course, because you don't wanna throw on a 5.56 A2 flash hider on a nine millimeter barrel, and then you will very quickly figure out why that doesn't work. Now the barrel itself is 4150 chrome all vanadium steel, one in 10 twist with a parkerized finish. It is basically a straight 0.750 taper, which is perfectly fine. Now moving back to the rail, you have exactly three slots of M-Lock at the three, six and nine o'clock position. All I have on it currently is a Grove Tech hand stop so that I don't accidentally blow my hand off because again, it is a very short overall package. And on top, of course, you have a full length Picatinny rail. Now, if you wanted, you could mount a lot of stuff to this. You could probably get away with some sort of combo unit for night vision shooting, like some of the Hollow Sun 321 units or some of the more expensive units out there as well that have a light illuminator and laser combo. So it kind of a big combo device. The Phantom Hill CTF2 is also another good option in that regard if you need a compact all-in-one unit. Or of course, you could just throw on a light, which is probably how I would recommend it if you're just gonna be using it for like home defense or just a general purpose bad gun. Now, moving back to the upper receiver itself, it is a very standard 7075 T6 aluminum billet upper receiver. If you've watched any of my other videos on Barracuda Arsenal's side charging uppers, it's going to be identical to that. It is again, a big chunk of aluminum, not particularly pretty in terms of its machining or aesthetics, but it works just fine. It is gonna add several ounces to the upper receiver, but again, we're talking about a four and a half inch, nine millimeter, blowback nine millimeter. Weight's not really all that important, but again, the side charging upper receivers definitely work. And again, with this, that doesn't have a last round bolt hold open, having that fairly large side charger makes it really easy to come across because of course, every time you reload, you need to come across and charge the gun to get that next round loaded up. Now. Talking about function, reliability, accuracy, all of that sort of stuff, this at the end of the day is still a nine millimeter blowback PCC. So it does all of those things. In terms of recoil, I know a lot of people complain about the recoil on nine millimeter PCCs, but it's basically non-existent. It has a very, very fast, snappy action. So you can definitely see it jittering when I'm shooting quickly. However, the overall recoil is very little. The entire recoil cycle, is straight back and forward. There's no nothing really delaying it whatsoever. So while it is a more violent operating system, the overall recoil is very low and it settles right back down. You can see that in some of the GoPro footage. It basically hovers inside of 15 yards. So it is, again, a more violent system than like your standard DI or even some piston systems out there, but it's not particularly bad and it is very easy to control. Make very quick shots at 50, 60, 70, 100 yards if you so desire. Now, as far as how it works with just the spring system installed, it is fairly anemic and it is very easy to cycle. So that means that they're probably balancing that out with having a heavier bolt with all of that additional steel on top. Again, I'm not really sure if it's better or worse than like a standard AR9. However, I can say that the recoil is violent, but minimal overall. And again, when we get into reliability, when using 17 round mags, factory mags, really any factory mags, actually even any of the Magpul or even the shorter UTG mags, reliability was 100% over 1,000 rounds. 
Now, I did have a couple issues magazine related with some very cheap KCI stick mags and an SGM mag that are both 30, 33 round mags. In that regard, they had some issues, but they have issues in general. Anytime I was using any factory style mag or even just any short standard 17 round mag from my Glock 17 that I have laying around, those mags all worked 100% and I had no issues. Keep in mind that I am using an Arrow EP9 and if you're using a different lower with like a mag block or again, any variety of lowers out there, your mileage probably will vary a little bit. Now, as far as accuracy goes, I didn't really do any dedicated accuracy testing with it. Most of the ammunition that I used was 115 grain Tula for the steel case. And then for brass, I was using 115 and 124 grain assorted ball, Sterling, Federal, some Winchester in there as well. Again, just kind of a hodgepodge of 115 and 124 grain ball. Now, one thing I will say about accuracy is that I did zero this gun at 25 yards multiple times. And usually when zeroing, I was able to get three rounds touching at 25 yards, which means it's probably somewhere between a four and a six MOA gun overall, which again, we're talking about a nine millimeter PCC. I don't think people are looking for sub MOA accuracy out of it. It is definitely capable, much more capable than your standard handgun for sure in terms of both mechanical accuracy and in terms of functional accuracy as well, being that it is much larger, the recoil is much less. And of course, with the stock attached, you have much less points uh, or you have much more points of contact and it's a much more stable system. Now, something that I did notice about this system, and I'm not sure if this is the same for all nine millimeter PCCs or at least all AR9 PCCs as it's been quite a while since I've actually shot one. But uh, most of the time when I was shooting this, it was freezing or below freezing outside. And I noticed that the system was cycling so fast that it was physically painful to pull the trigger at certain times because of how fast that trigger was resetting. And so you were getting almost like a trigger slap like you would get off of some old, smaller nine millimeter handguns. And it was quite painful to shoot actually. So most of the time I was shooting it, I was using gloves because again, the action is so fast and violent that that trigger is actually kind of slapping your finger every time not particularly pleasant and just something I noticed when it was freezing cold outside. And the trigger in question is just the Palmetto State Armory EPT, the enhanced polish trigger. Nothing special, basically just a mil spec plus style trigger. Now, when we get into philosophy of use, if you will, this can make a lot of sense if you're looking for a baggable, foldable nine millimeter PCC. In terms of performance, however, it is still just a nine millimeter PCC. If you hate 9mm PCCs, you have no use for them. Even though this is a nice folding system, it's not going to make any sense to you. However, if you are willing to accept the downsides of a 9mm PCC, and that is something that you're looking for, it does all of those things very well. And again, it does allow you to attach a folding brace, very simple, and retain 100% functionality, even while folded. Now, while it is folded like this, it can be a little bit crowded to get your hand around and grip the gun. You can still make it work, of course. Now. One thing that I will say is that, again, it was 100% reliable with every ammunition type that we tested, as long as we were using a magazine of at least decent quality. As far as function goes, as far as value goes, I really have nothing to complain about. Again, it was more than accurate enough. It was 100% reliable. It fit together fairly easy. I personally didn't have any issues with it. Uh, again, I've been using it in freezing or sub-freezing temperatures with crappy ammunition, with mediocre ammunition. I lubed it when I originally got it, and I haven't cleaned or really touched it since. This is the first time I've taken it apart on camera since I've had it. So as far as function goes, reliability, value, it's a really good option from those standpoints. Again, the main downside of this 9mm PCC is that it's a 9mm PCC. If that sort of system works for you, if it's something that you're looking for, Again, something this short and compact, even though it's not particularly short when extended, when you get it into the folded position, this fits in a lot of different setups. You can fit this in a very small bag if you really wanted to. Again, takes Glock mags in this configuration, though I believe it can work with other style magazines as well. Don't quote me on that. But again, takes the same mags as my other carry gun, so it can be very versatile in that regard. At the end of the day, though, it's still a 9mm PCC. If you're willing to live with a 9mm PCC, then this does all of those things very well. If you're looking for a 300 blackout, 7.62x39, or 5.56, well, this ain't gonna do that. So, with all of that out of the way, guys, let me know what you guys think of the Bear Creek Arsenal bufferless AR9. Personally, I think that they did a really good job in terms of function and value. At the end of the day, again, it is just a nine millimeter blowback PCC. So with all of that out of the way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next one.
Peace off. Now for anyone wondering, the optic mount, this is the Midwest Industries night vision height riser. I bought it, I'm, I'm a dealer for Midwest Industries. I think I got it for like 60 bucks or something like that. I didn't think it was quite that tall. It kind of makes for a good vertical foregrip. You can really get a good grip on the optic. And the optic itself is the AT3 Alpha, which is basically a Sigro Mio 5 competitor, but it works fairly well. So there's that.